Does this look viewable to everybody? Looks good. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to walk through these. We have a we have a with the uh, really incorporating all the guide a lot of the guide data star data now. Uh, we have a lot of good events. At least the um, uncertainty in the path has decreased to the point where a lot of events are a much higher probability observed other than you know unexpected double stars and those issues but the formal modeling is looking much better now uh, and this year in North America we had quite a few bright star events we still have several left in 2020. Um, moving into 2021 we will can should continue that trend um, well, we will. We still have a you know a good number of bright star events, but I expect that somewhere, as we get into 2021, we'll get another boost in the actually the path predictions. Of course, at some point, once the Gaia, once the third data release DR3 comes about, which will be will be somewhat delayed, so it's not not uh, due to the COVID situation. I'm not sure when that's really going to fall, but but once that happens and once JPL starts to integrate that, then I think we're going to have a big improvement in the asteroid orbits as well, because JPL will be incorporating all the 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 all the Gaia observations of the asteroids, and that should make a pretty substantial difference in the accuracy of the paths. So I think we'll see even more very good events falling in 2021. But with that said, right now I'm, I've got a list here of several events I see over the next year that I think look interesting or things that we need to be aware of uh, priority events. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> this first upcoming one, July 30th, there's one with Hera over the Southeast, US magnitude 9.8 star and good pass certainty, very uh, low and low uncertainty. Uh, <clears throat> 535 Montague this is on July 31st, the day after another magnitude 9.2.0 store. So and actually, let me think about this a minute. We go back. Yeah, so those are a little bit far apart. I don't think the paths are quite crossing, but one could hit both of those and the uh, same, both of those in, in the Florida area, Florida and, and South Georgia. It'll probably keep Roger busy. And then August 3rd, 106 Dione, he's kind of low altitude from the Southeast, but magnitude 8.8 .8 stars, so still a potentially interesting event. Um, August 20th, this is um, now in the western U.S. That's hopefully a little bit beyond the southwest monsoon season, so weather prospects hopefully will be good for this event, magnitude 9.8 star. Um, <clears throat> now here's another, this is a campaign by Swery. They'll be observing this occultation by uh, Eurobates. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, September 16th, a dim star, magnitude 4.5, but it's an interesting, um, an interesting object, and one that uh, you know it'd be good for I/O to people to try to participate in. Hopefully, by the time we get closer to that time, we'll be able to kind of coordinate with whatever um, the Swery folks are doing in sort of in terms of um, planning their stations, and um, hope we get some good data on this one. Uh, September should be a reasonable good time in that part of the country. So next, uh, Letitia, October 15th, across the southern U.S., 8 point magnitude, 8.6 star, broad path. Uh, should have a good chance of picking up a lot of data on this one, particularly in the southwest in October. Uh, October 19th, another one across the western U.S. from Denver down through like Fresno area. Uh, magnitude 8.8 .8 star again, big asteroid, good path for good path certainty on that one. Uh, another sorry campaign on October 21st. This is with Oris. Uh, you know, uh, when we get closer, again, we'll be keeping an eye on this. I expect that sorry will be updating their path. Um, but another one that will be interesting to help try to participate with. I expect that they uh, sorry maybe putting out their own stations again, but I'm sure we can help even at magnitude 16. There will be some people who can reach down that deep, and so it'd be good to help out with them. Uh, Titania, October 27th, Eastern US uh, along the Northeast coast and down to Texas, 
magnitude 9.6 star, good path certainty. <clears throat> Ophelia, November 16th. So November, weather prospects could be a little tough up in the northeast, but then moving all the way down to the southwest, there should be good, good chances out there. Magnitude 9.6 star, large asteroid. Duration of 12 seconds, so should be another good event. November 28th with Badinia. Now this is, this one, actually there's two events on the same night, one at four hours UT, one at eight hours UT, and the paths cross in southeastern New Mexico. So anybody who wishes to have to travel out to southeast New Mexico, there's a the potential of catching both of these events from the same location. The first one is magnitude 7.2 star, the next one, second one is magnitude 9.1, both reasonably long duration, about eight seconds. Path certainty is good on both of them. Uh, so kind of an interesting opportunity out there. It's late November, but you know, some good ch reasonable chance of decent weather in New Mexico that time of year. Um, and this is one that uh, we'll want to keep an eye on. I'm not sure to expect um, Swery or Lucky Star or the real TNO group to put out a path prediction for this one. Right now, the uncertainty is quite large, but maybe something will come along to help that out with this one. But it's a potentially interesting event, magnitude 11 star, duration of three and a half seconds. So that's quite observable by most observers. Uh, what we need on this one, though, is a better idea of the path, but still, uh, um, even without that, a lot of observers out west would be worth, worth a try. Uh, January 19th, so this is moved into 2021. <clears throat> March 18th of 2021, a good event with Flora, magnitude 7.2 star. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit early in the evening, four hours UT, but should be a good event. <clears throat> April 2nd, Jupiter will call to magnitude 5.8 star. Um, the duration is 72, minute, 72 minutes when I plot this with the cult. It just shows the path kind of uh, approaching the East Coast, uh, but actually it's somewhat observable from much of the Eastern US and Canada. Uh, we can, we'll be putting up some more details on this on the websites later, provide a little more guidance on that. But uh, this one could be an interesting observation. The, the reappearance would be visible from the Eastern US. The, the actual disappearance was, was not. Hebe. On J July 26, 2021, magnitude eight star, 18 second duration, large asteroid. So again, this should be, uh, it's a good event to observe. Should be pretty easy to pick up. Uh, Colga, September 7, 2021, Southwest US, magnitude 8.7 star, 10 seconds duration. Should be good weather, weather prospects up there. Uh, probably far enough west to avoid the southwest monsoon. And at September 7th, a little bit beyond that time range, so this should be a very good observing opportunity. <clears throat> Polkava, an interesting target object and a magnitude 7.1 star, duration of five seconds from southeast US and across Mexico as well. September, reasonably early September. <clears throat> and then October, uh, 2021, another event with Eurobates, which is already on the on the Swery list. Uh, so it's another one we'll keep an eye on, and it's in the southwest U.S. Um, should be a good opportunity, and I expect it. Uh, well, I, we'll we'll want to try to coordinate again with Swery on this when we get closer to that time. And that's kind of the end of those events. So <clears throat> if anybody has questions, I'll stop sharing my screen and. Listen for questions. And I'll mention I will, this, this set will be posted on the website um, along with the rest of the presentations later uh, in case somebody wants to go through that list and um, see any, anything in particular. Um, uh, Jim, this is James Jamara here, uh, new participant. Um, haven't made an observation yet, but tried to do the Psyche observation uh, last year. 
Um, I was wondering if there are going to be campaigns added on the uh, IOTA website for this for this year and next year because it looks like it's still just uh, the two events from last year. Yeah, this is David. I'm sort of responsible for setting those up, but um, with COVID-19, it's sort of uh, thrown in any possibility of doing campaigns out the window. Um, yeah. You know, especially for us older folks, uh, we're very reluctant to travel much at all. Um, so, um, um, but, um, you know, especially by air, you know, a lot of people are, a number of people are still traveling apparently with not too much ill effects, but I'm still leery of that. Um, we can still try to identify events that might be cross country where we could try to do a campaign where everybody is trying to observe nearby where they are rather than, you know, extensive Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. That's the idea. I mean, just look at these good events that we have. I think we should, um, you know, just, it'd be great just to put your, um, um, you know, just put your pictures there. Uh, you just showed of uh, some of those events that would be good enough uh, mm -hmm. you know, and just say um, um, these events are recommended is um, uh, very good events a high priority to, to try to observe I'll be talking a little bit more about that in my talk tomorrow but uh, um, um, that's uh, um, yeah, you know, that's that's the main idea. We we also try to hold uh, half campaign events around our IOTA meetings, and uh, we specifically targeted this meeting for the occultation by Turin dot um, coming up um, um, tomorrow night, um, actually early Monday morning, um, with the path uh, passing um, over Austin, Texas, and then it, it extends northeast from there. Um, passing diagonally over Arkansas um, and uh, central Ohio and northern New York. Uh, so um, you know, it turns out it looks like it's going to be clear over most of that path, uh, but uh, um, but um, uh, the um, um, but but there is a tropical storm heading into Mexico, northern Mexico and southern uh, Texas. And that's going to uh, cause a lot of cloudiness in, in southern Texas um, up to Austin. It's not clear how far north it'll go. There are observers in Waco, and the predictions say it's going to be clear there. Uh, so, um, 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 but um, uh, but but it's just fortunate there's sort of a clear band between two systems. Um, and the path is in that band. Um, usually it's the other way around where there's a weather front over a whole band or something. And, uh, but, um, but if we had had the IOTA meeting in Austin, um, we would have, um, um, might have been stuck there and we would have been scrambling to try to get to the Northeast to better weather. Um, and of course, uh, um, um, uh, Richard Nugent uh, lives in that area, so you know, maybe he'll be able to, maybe it'll be clear enough there, or maybe he'll have to, um, you know, hightail it somewhere to the northeast to, to get a good, a clear skies. Um, Bob Sandy has been bugging me for you know, months, it seems now, about uh, <laughs> trying to observe it. He plans to observe it, you know, travel to the boot heel of Missouri, uh, so clear across the state for, for him. Um, so um, it's... I didn't realize you could travel for 400 miles and, and stay still be within Missouri, but you can from Kansas City to uh, um, this little town of Haiti and uh, the boot heel. Um, so um, anyway, uh, that's a 10.2 magnitude star and it's an interesting configuration. There's another star that night uh, um, where the path goes over um, um, Steve Preston's area in north uh, over the Pacific Northwest, right. Um, I might give it a try out here, and um, and the um, um, and there's even a you know there are three stars that that star they're only separated by 14 seconds of arc, and then there's another star that's 25 seconds of arc, um, you know another 11th magnitude star. The target star is the brightest of the three, though, and um, and Bob is worried that he won't be able to resolve the stars. But um, with 14 seconds of arc separation, that should be pretty easy um, with just about any system. Uh, but um, um, anyway, um, um, 
you know, I was hoping to observe it ourselves, and I sort of got made the mistake of thinking it was Tuesday night instead of Monday night. And there just isn't time for us to do a viable effort to go to Ohio, and um, and and with uh, with coronavirus concerns, uh, we're concerned about making such a trip anyway. Uh, so I put a station in a cult watcher just to see how things were there, and I. You know, had that there earlier, thinking we might do it. I you know, had the date wrong in my mind, uh, but um, um, but observers uh, close to that path are definitely encouraged to try to observe it. Um, so, anyway, uh, and, you, and as you showed, there are lots of other good possibilities, even brighter events coming up later. So, Steve, I want to know, what do we got to do to get on the good side of your predictions? I see you favored uh, southern Georgia and northern Florida and central California and New Mexico. What about the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> there were two good events over Phoenix, I noticed. There were one, uh, at least one very right over Phoenix. and There, and the there other, definitely some good ones in the southwest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, some good ones in the southwest. Yeah, we, we get the crumbs. <laughs> you get good weather. That mm -hmm. counts for a lot. You know, we ought to be a little analytical about this and uh, analyze why. And I have a feeling that uh, dues paying members get more attention. Okay, so I haven't paid my dues for a while. <laughs> That's supposed to do. Any other questions or should we move on? Maybe we can move on, Roger. Well, this is Ted. Oh. I just I just wanted to uh, be, I'm glad that, that the Dunhams have moved to Fountain Hills because we all know that occultations follow them around the country. But I don't know why David had to move so close to me that he's always on the same cord. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, it was just the luck of the draw. We, you know, that beautiful house became available, and we couldn't find anything else on the market that we wanted. <laughs> so, but, uh, um, but no, we wanted I, to... I, I've told Peggy that we have to move now, so she's not very happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that meant, Chad, I thought that meant that they'd keep an eye on your scope when you set it up in their yard. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's see if we can move 